I was at a friend's birthday last week and uh, she turned 40. And 40 is a big age. Everyone's giving all kinds of advice, right? She's worried about it. People are like, you know, 40 is just a number, okay? It doesn't matter. 40 is a new 30, 30 is a new 20. Okay, that's true, but that's only true in the city. <laughs> if you go out in the country, it's the other way around. <laughs> out of the country, 20 is a new 80. <laughs> Every 21-year-old on a farm has got three kids, two mortgages. I'm like, Triple J sucks, get off my lawn. <laughs> anyway, you come back to the city, right? You walk down, like, you know, Derby Street. There are 95-year-old men making dancing TikTok videos. I tune into live stream tonight for the nursing home. I'll be dead. The Twitch is live. <laughs> it's weird that, like, time moves differently at different ages. Have you noticed that? So I've got a nephew who's a toddler, right? When he was first learning to speak, he could barely say my name. It's like, om, t, uh, uh, om, like that. One month later, I saw him, he goes, actually, Thomas, the Stegosaurus is one of the largest of known dinosaurs <laughs> during the Jurassic period. <laughs> one month it took him to learn that. I did nothing that month. <laughs> I got fat and lost $1,000. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get healthy lately. Anyone else trying to get healthy? Two people. <laughs> Everyone else is perfect. I saw, I saw a study recently, right? A really eye-opening study said for the first time in history, more people are dying from obesity than from famine. That's amazing. More people now die from obesity than from famine. That means now, for just one dollar a day, you can sponsor a fat guy. <laughs> this is Michael. He's not left the house in five years. For thirty dollars a month, he'll hide all the food in the top cupboard. Can save Michael's life. Did it, did it cut to like a journalist in a McDonald's car park? An absolutely tragic scene, seriously, his fat kids shuffle their fat fries and fries. Please give generously. Not too generously, of course, he's in the first place, but please help out as you can. It's hard to get healthy, like, there's so much advice out there, right? And you don't really know what's right or what's wrong. All my friends are falling for this lunatic in the ice bath, Wim Hof. You know this guy? What a racket this guy's running. You know what he's selling? He's selling breathing. <laughs> he's selling breathing to people who are already breathing. Like, I don't understand if he was at the cemetery walking around the graveyard. Hey, I've noticed you haven't breathed in 80 years. I've got a product that can really help you out. Like, that would make more sense. I thought bottled water was the greatest scam of the century, but no, selling breathing has topped it. <laughs> Let me get this right. I breathe in, then I breathe out, and then I give you the money. Right? <laughs> you take Amex, I want to get my points. I was going to a funeral recently. My great uncle passed away. And it's very sad, but like, I'm, I'm 40. I don't deal with death very much. I'm not very comfortable with, with like, funerals and stuff. I don't go to many funerals. But I realised that, I went to this funeral, right? I realised old people are really comfortable with death, right? Because old people, like, I go to this funeral, everyone else is wearing black, they're crying. Old people rock up like they go into a party. <laughs> they walk in and go, wow, this venue's fantastic. <laughs> Can I get a glass of wine? These are dim sims, these are great. <laughs> the minister walks past, they all know him, he's like a local DJ. So, <laughs> oh, great set tonight, Jeff. You go to Wendy's Wake next week, we'll get pre drinks. <laughs> If you're over 85, a funeral is like your schoolies. <laughs> Getting trashed all your friends. Yeah, I don't, I don't like dealing with death very much. I'm not very comfortable with it. I'm barely comfortable with my phone dying. <laughs> that's the level of death I'm used to, my phone. I think that's going to be how they wean us onto real death. All our phones die, that's how we get used to real human death. You know, grandma will be in the hospital, we'll rock up. Hey, doctor, how's grandma? She's on 1%. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have a charger, so... I'm very sorry. So there's a lot of talk at the moment um, about men and masculinity and what it means to be a man in today's society. Personally, I don't think you can be a real man if you have hair. <laughs> no real man has got hair, you know? What kind of man gets up in the morning, looks in the mirror, starts brushing their hair? What kind of pussy-ass way is that to start the day? 
Look at the guys who join the army and the marines, right? First thing they do is shave their head. The real man stuff to do. <laughs> Gotta protect the country. Commit war crimes. <laughs> All this is designed for testosterone, right? So if your boyfriend has hair, it's just a dud. He's a dud guy. He's a dud guy. So not enough man in this. Some women come up to you after the show, like, I love my boyfriend's big, thick head of hair. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Do you like his baby teeth too? <laughs> a lot of couples in here tonight. I can't see anyone. I'm assuming there are. There are. I, um, I started seeing someone recently and I've got a new theory about relationships, right? I think all relationships should have an end date. <laughs> like, you should know when it's gonna end. It's a good thing, by the way. You should know when it's gonna end. Because that way you put more effort in, if you know it's ending. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you get together with someone that goes well, right? You make some kind of commitment to stay together. I think instead, you should make a commitment to break up. It's like, hey, I really like you. Let's break up in six months. <laughs> Because that way, when your partner says, where is this going? So well, it's going to July 10th. So <laughs> we better make the most of it. It's like when you're at the gym, right? When you're at the gym and the trainer goes, there's five minutes left. I want you to give it everything. You will. You'll give it everything. Because it's going to end. <laughs> but if the trainer said, okay, when you get on that treadmill to one of your dies. <laughs> death. <laughs> I'm not against relationships. Obviously, it'd be beautiful to be with someone for the rest of your life, okay? But think about how good your relationship will be in the weeks leading up to renewal date. <laughs> your partner will be fit and healthy, the bathroom will be clean. So they want a new contract. <laughs> then July 10 comes around, you have a nice candlelit dinner, you get the lawyers over. <laughs> You know, Maria, she's very happy. She has an offer from John at work for a six-month contract <laughs> with extra holidays. If you're willing to quit smoking, we'll sign this deal right now. And breaking up is hard. I've been broken up with. I've broken up with people. It sucks. This way, you don't have to have those awkward conversations. Right? You just have to wait until Tuesday. <laughs> hey, what happened with you and Carol? Oh, we chose not to renew, and she has a new service provider, so she's very happy. <laughs>